Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time of the day it is that you are joining us for the Tulsa World Scene podcast, Zoom, video, chat extravaganza. I am here with my colleagues, the lovely and talented Jimmy Trammell and the lovelier and talented Grace Wood. We want to thank you for joining us. Uh, and where, whether you are uh, plucking this off uh, uh, the podcast on Apple or Spotify or the like, watching it on the TulsaWorld.com website, or however you're taking us in, we appreciate your time uh, to listen to us matter on. Um, it is a rainy day here. It has been a rainy day for the past three days. I'm sure that the PGA people are thanking their lucky stars that they didn't have their tournament this week. Um, and because it's raining, that means flowers will be blooming. And I believe, Grace, you know a little bit something about what to do with said flowers. Yeah. So this week I wrote about the Tulsa Foundation for Architecture's new initiative called Drafts and Design. And the TFA does a lot of different events to kind of try to expose people to different elements of Tulsa architecture. Usually they'll do like tours around downtown and stuff. Um, but this one is a little bit different because they're partnering with local breweries like American Solera and Cabin Boys, and they're hosting um, different creative workshops. Um, and they have a workshop coming up in June that I thought was really interesting. And it's going to be focused on teaching people the art of ikebana. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that late or correctly because it's a Japanese word, but it's a style of floral arrangement that's sort of focused around simplicity and minimalism. And it's been um, an important part of Japanese culture for a long time. Um, so they'll be leading the class at American Solera with Anthuse florals. And the flower arrangements that they'll be teaching everyone to make will be inspired by the architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright, which will be really cool. And Japan was sort of um, Frank Lloyd Wright's muse for a long time. Um, he just really loved their design concepts and their culture. And he constructed several buildings in Japan and even modeled his own home in a Japanese style. And he just incorporated a lot of Japanese elements in his design. Um, so the class, which is on June 2nd, will be drawing a lot of inspiration from that. And they're going to be putting on a lot of more workshops just on a monthly basis throughout the summer. So um, everyone can go to the TFA website to get more information about those and buy tickets. So it's a cool thing that they're doing. And nothing, nothing, nothing says... Nothing says flower arranging like 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 craft brewery, but um, <laughs> it's an interesting combination. <laughs> it's an interesting comment. It's an interesting comment. Beer and buds, or something, anyway, or blooms, or whatever. I like it's that. That's what I should have titled the article. <laughs> There's still time. I think we can probably get that in. <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, the. Uh, the landscape of Tulsa at one point. Uh, for those of you who are as old as I am, might remember seeing a sign along, uh, I believe it was Highway 169, for a place called Spatula City that did not exist, but was an important part of something that has become something of a Tulsa icon. And I think Jimmy Trammell has more to say about that. That sign for Spatula City, a fictional store, sprang up in 1988 because uh, Weird Al Yankovic was here filming the movie UHF, uh, which came out in 1989. And uh, he was the uh, put in charge of a fictional UHF station in Tulsa. Uh, they had some oddball programs, some oddball commercials. One of the commercials was for Spatula City, which was in fact a warehouse market at 63rd and Peoria. Uh, you would know this uh, if anyone watches the Blu-ray DVD of UHF and listens to the commentary because Weird Al Yankovic is kind enough during the commentary to mention every single address for scenes that were filmed in Tulsa. It's it's very cool. Uh, we're, we're talking about this, by the way, because Weird Al is coming back to Tulsa June 1st for a performance at Tulsa Theater. Uh, I think Weird Al is, is very generational. My children are 20 and 16. They love him. For people who listen to Dr. Domeno, 
back in the 70s. You love them. And ever since. Uh, but I, I went I spent part of the day yesterday looking for every UHF film site in Tulsa I could find. Made a big circle and uh, got a Friday story with an A to Z guide for UHF, all the things about the movie. Uh, and kind of throw in like, hey, this was a film site, this was a film site, this was a film site. It's nothing as uh, visual and demonstrative as, say, The Outsider's House, another movie filmed in Tulsa. But it's kind of cool to know where things were filmed and that the that UHF is a cult classic that is part of Tulsa's history. And if I remember correctly, they, they used... Um... I think it's First Christian Church downtown as City Hall because uh, it has, you know, columns and, 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 and good stairs. And at the time, our City Hall was a, you know, look, looked like an ammo bunker. Um, yeah, that's on, right. Yeah, so uh, um, do, do you go into why he, they chose Tulsa to film it? I, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure this is in the lore, but I, I, I don't recall offhand why they chose Tulsa as the place to film it. I didn't go into that in this story, but I've talked to Weird Al previously uh, for an anniversary story about UHF. And a big reason was Gray Fredrickson was a producer who, oh, by the way, was a producer on The Outsiders. And he says, hey, we filmed The Outsiders here. Just go ahead and film uh, your movie here too. And it worked out that uh, Kensington Galleria, the long gone shopping mall, at 71st and uh, Lewis uh, had so much space available in that they were able to build sound stages in that mall area, stay in the hotel and never really have to leave the building to do a lot of their work. So it was just, just a perfect scenario for, for that movie to be filmed in Tulsa. Okay, all right. Well, I, 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 I have seen it, although it has been a very long time, but I, I, I remember that it, um, um, it did have a certain uh, do-it-yourself quality uh, to it. I mean, <laughs> he, how far into his, how long had he been around when he did that? He, that it was fairly early on in, in his career that he made this movie, if I remember well, correctly. Weird Al came along at the perfect time in history because MTV came along in 1982. So that really helped him uh, blow up with his music videos his uh, his great parody songs and so you figure he'd been six years into the mtv era when this movie was made and uh, uh grace i don't think has seen the movie yet but grace uh people other people in the movie it was fran drescher before the nanny michael richards before seinfeld in fact seinfeld and uhf came out within 15 days of each other in 1989 so it was almost simultaneous that he was stanley spadowski on UHF and Cosmo Kramer on Seinfeld. At, at the time, maybe the biggest star other than Al was Victoria Jackson, who played his love interest, Victoria being a Saturday Night Live cast member at that time. Uh, and you, everyone should watch it with the, with the commentary with Weird Al. Michael Richards pops up in the commentary. Victoria Jackson pops up in the commentary. And she makes a really interesting observation was, gee, you hired Fran Drescher a brunette with a funny voice, and you hired Victoria Jackson, a blonde with a funny voice. So it was kind of interesting. They went, uh, he went with funny voice for both the two female leads. And Billy Barty, the great Billy Barty was in it. Okay. In, 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 in no doubt a brief role. No, I shouldn't have said that. That was, that was not right. <laughs> he, he was subjected to worse in the movie. So you're, you're, that's, that's, you're good. That, 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 that's true. The, 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 it, it was a different time. Well, Grace, Grace is significantly <laughs> intrigued. She's going to go watch this movie now. Correct, Grace? I mean, I think I'm just going to blow off my work the rest of the day. And there go you watch go. It. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll cover for you with the editors. We, we, we've Perfect. got you. We've got your back. So. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, what else we got coming up um, on the, um, we have a list of uh, things to do for this uh, Memorial Day that's, that will be in uh, Wednesday's um, uh, Tulsa World, uh, ranging everything from uh, rodeos to Renaissance fairs, uh, some concerts, um, things like the Black Wall Street Legacy Festival, uh, which will have a 
uh, an African street party and and live music for much of the Saturday before. And also, uh, we mentioned a an unusual thing in uh, there is in Rose Hill Cemetery, which is uh, on Admiral of Admiral and Harvard, um, a, a place called the Abbey Mausoleum, uh, where uh, a number of Tulsa's luminaries have their final resting place, including the founder of, of the Tulsa world. Um, they're going to be doing a special event on uh, May 28th at two o'clock. Um, featuring uh, uh, Whitney Myers, vocalist with uh, musicians accompanying her, doing a program of songs from classical to jazz, all on the subject of prayer. Uh, and it's going to take place in the chapel area within the mausoleum. So that's that's a very different <laughs> sort of thing. Uh, but it, it, it keeps with the idea of... of of Memorial Day and what the holiday uh, is about, which is remembering those primarily uh, of the armed forces, but all of those that we have lost through the years and, and remembering remembering them. So, um, and I think Jimmy, you've got something, it's about remembrance, but it's a different form of remembrance that you're gonna be writing about for this Sunday. Yeah, we go from, uh funny with Weird Al to serious with a remember the removal bike ride that the uh, Cherokee Nation sends representatives to annually. Five young ladies from the Cherokee Nation are going to go to the East Coast and ride the entire Trail of Tears route on bicycles mm -hmm. as part of the remembrance. And for the first time, uh, the delegation of representatives is an all-female crew. So that's kind of interesting. I went over to Tahlequah this morning for a a, a send-off ceremony, and they seem to have selected some fine young ladies who no doubt will represent, represent the Cherokee Nation very well. And, 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 are, and they're all local homans that are, that are doing this? Or yes, are they all, from, all from the 918. Okay, all right. Well, we wish them, we wish them a, 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 safe, a safe journey on, on that. Um, speaking of journeys, we'll have an interview on Sunday with uh, Grace K. Shim, who is a former Tulsan, who's just published her first novel called The No Family. And if I had planned ahead, I would have had that in hand, but it's close enough that we can hold it up. There we go. Um, this is her first uh, published novel, and it is about a uh, young Korean American girl uh, living in Tulsa who um, takes uh, one of those DNA tests to determine one's ancestry um, and through that discovers quite unbeknownst to herself an entire family living in Korea that want to get in touch with her. Um, and so it's about her going to... Uh, South Korea and discovering that her father, her, her, her deceased father's family is one of the wealthiest in the country um, and that they are willing to lavish her with pretty much whatever she wants until she finds out the reason why. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an entertaining, uh, the author herself said, kind of soap opera -y at times. Uh, it is a, a story. It is marketed for uh, young adult readers, but it's, uh, I think, anybody that, that, is, that enjoys a, a slightly, slightly over-the-top uh, soap opera-y romance will, have a, will enjoy it a great deal. We have an interview with her talking about being, uh, talking about growing up Korean in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and how that affected the way she tells this story. We'll also have a conversation with uh, Scott Seaton, who is the new music director for the Signature Symphony. Um, he was announced earlier this week and has been in town preparing for the new season. We sit down with him and talk about the things he has planned for, for that orchestra. 
And if you are are hungry, we have a review of a relatively new restaurant called uh, Palmyra Mediterranean Grill, uh, operated by uh, a man originally from Jordan. And uh, we'll let you know what they have to offer and what we like about it. So um, anything else that we need to talk about before we let these people get back to their real lives? I don't think so. Everybody is fine. I'm fine, too. We want to, again, thank you for taking the time to listen to us. Uh, remember to check out the Tulsa World at uh, from fine, available at fine news sellers everywhere and online at TulsaWorld.com. Until next time, we want to wish you a good night and a pleasant tomorrow. Behave. Bye.